These men are handling old amalgam tooth fillings for recycling. Once removed, what had lived inside our mouths for years is suddenly treated as the dangerous poison it's always been. Mercury is so toxic that at certain levels it drives people mad, but even the tiniest amounts are regarded as unsafe. At lower levels, and no one quite knows how low they are, the metal attacks the brain and the central nervous system, producing symptoms which include nervousness and irritability, lack of concentration, loss of memory and self-confidence, mood swings, anxiety, depression, fatigue and insomnia. Because there can be other causes for these symptoms, no one has associated dental amalgam with them. But suddenly the familiar quicksilver of our youth is beginning to look dirty. If you have something that's being put in your mouth that you can't dispose of in a wastebasket without breaking our environmental protection laws, there's no point in keeping it around. There's no point taking that type of risk. There's no point in exposing people to any level of mercury toxicity if you don't have to. Mercury is a poison. There's no safe level. The World Health Organization has determined that. And so how can we continue to implant that into people's teeth? Dentists have been using amalgam for over a century, convinced of its safety. The mercury is used to bond silver and other metals together to make a cheap, efficient and durable filling. Yet no one has proven that when the mercury goes into our bodies that it is safe. The dentists have always assumed it was safe because there were no identifiable side effects. But dentists may not have been the right people to look for the subtle but dangerous symptoms of low-level mercury poisoning. Supposing there have been side effects, but of the kind only doctors are qualified to recognize. Has the evidence always been there? Dr. Lars Freiberg at a German amalgam conference. He's the world's leading authority on mercury poisoning and was chief advisor to the World Health Organization on mercury safety. Until now, he's remained studiously neutral in the mercury debate. Dr. Freiberg, is there a safe level of mercury? No, there is no safe level of mercury and no one has actually shown that there is a safe level. So there's no amount, in your opinion, that should really go into the body? I would like to avoid it as far as possible. If there is no safe level of mercury, why does the British Dental Association say there is one? I don't know, but I think they are wrong. The first evidence of mercury's journey into the body came ten years ago. Dentists had always assumed that mercury stayed inert in the filling. But scientists discovered that the gleaming new amalgam inside a polished tooth didn't stay put. It leaked as mercury vapor and entered the bloodstream. This is an electron microscope picture of a 10-year-old amalgam filling. Those black holes are where the mercury used to be. In this filling, some 40% has evaporated in only 10 years. So where did it go? And could it cause harm to humans? The challenge was taken up here in Western Canada by two men from different disciplines. Their cooperation has produced scientific revelations which are so damning that they may yet bring about the end of the very use of dental amalgam. Fritz Lorscheider and Murray Vimy set about clearing the smoke surrounding the amalgam mystery. Vimy, the academic dentist and World Health Organization consultant, and Lorscheider, professor of medical physiology at the University of Calgary. They pioneered a simple but dramatic experiment to show not only where the missing mercury went, but also that it did do harm when it got there. Their work shattered the comfortable illusion that mercury in amalgams was stable and safe. They took a sheep and put fillings in its teeth containing radioactive mercury, which would show up as black on x-rays. Here's the outline of the sheep going all the way around. And this is the jawbone of the sheep. Here are the two stomachs. This area is the liver. And here are the two kidneys. And this is the transverse colon. So the mercury from the fillings, which was slightly radioactive, migrated to these tissues. In fact, it was in all the tissues. Now, the dental profession said that, well, it's a sheep. It chews too much. Um, they grind a lot. They, they regurgitate their food. It's not a good example. So they repeated the work with monkeys and found again the mercury had spread. When you look at all the current scientific evidence, what do you think it's trying to tell you? It tells me very succinctly that there's a chronic low-dose exposure to a toxic heavy metal that 80 to 85 percent of the industrialized world has this metal implanted in their teeth and it's a situation of timed release poisoning now even more ominous evidence has been uncovered this time about the dangers of amalgams mercury in the most vulnerable and sensitive organ of all dr david eggleston is a dentist in california his clients include tom cruise 
His less glamorous work recently took him to the county morgue to investigate the relationship between dental mercury and the brains of the dead. Eggleston spent months studying the records and discovered that mercury from amalgams not only accumulates in the brain, but some of this poison stays in the skull for as long as 40 years. I think there is legitimate concern regarding the mercury uh, issue in dentistry. Uh, mercury does release from the silver fillings. It does accumulate in the body. Do you uh, insert uh, mercury amalgam in this practice here? Uh, no, I do not. For the reasons you've just given? Uh, for, yes, for the mercury yeah. issue, yes. And have you had your fillings, your, your amalgam fillings removed? Yes, I have. Again, for the same reason? Uh, for concern with, with uh, mercury, yes. Is there any doubt in your mind about the association between mercury and Alzheimer's? I would not want to make the statement that mercury causes Alzheimer's disease, but there is no doubt in my mind that low levels of mercury present in the brain could cause the neuronal cell death, and uh, this could lead to a dementia, which would be similar to Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Boyd Haley, professor of medicinal and biochemistry, has just made a dramatic breakthrough while investigating the implication of dental amalgam with Alzheimer's. He's discovered that even tiny quantities of the metal can produce changes in the brain that are identical to changes caused by the disease. Specifically, the mercury inhibits the efficiency of tubulin, a protein essential to brain cells. We can't go inside a living human being and look at their brain. So we have to work outside and do scientific experiments such as we've done. And to the best that we can determine with these experiments, mercury is a time bomb in the brain waiting to have an effect. If it's not bothering someone when they're young, especially when they age, it could turn into something quite disastrous. In Sweden, Dr. Lars Freiberg, the world authority on metals poisoning, remains baffled at the various attempts by dental lobbies to maintain a rearguard defense for material whose time he feels has come. British dentists say that there's no evidence that it shouldn't to be continued for use in children. Yeah, I, I think uh, th there's no basis for, for such a statement. Are you saying children are particularly vulnerable or what? They are definitely particularly vulnerable. We know that uh, if you take uh, the young child, I mean, it takes uh, a few years after birth until the brain is, uh, is developed. And we know that uh, the, the, the brain in the children are much more sensitive than in the adults. But it's not just young children at risk. Even the unborn have mercury pollution in their brains from their mother's amalgams. This evidence came to light in a study just completed by Professor Gustav Drasch, a forensic toxicologist. He examined the brains of dead babies and fetuses and found mercury deposits had crossed the placenta into their tiny skulls. I think the implications are serious. It is a question uh, whether or not we have to restrict the application of dental amalgam to women, not only in childbearing age, but even before. We know that the mercury goes into the brain of the unborn child. Can this, under any circumstances, be a good thing? No, I will say no. You should try to avoid to implant toxic metals in the mouth. Why then does uh, an organization like the British Dental Association say that mercury is, is, is safe for everybody uh, unless they're allergic to it? Well, uh, I don't know why they say it. That's impossible for me to answer. You've written a standard textbook on the toxicology of metals and you don't agree with them, do you? No, I don't. But while government ignores the issue, there is a new awareness in some quarters that patients need greater protection against the possible health hazards. Stephen Chalicombe, professor of oral medicine at Guy's Hospital in London and one of Britain's top dentists. He has bothered to keep up with the new research and finds much of it compelling. Are you satisfied that amalgam is safe? No, I don't think so. I think the evidence over the last few years has really suggested that we should have another look at the ultimate safety of an organ. What do you make of the official government view, the Department of Health view, which is that there's no problem and therefore it doesn't even merit the priority of further research? I think uh, things have changed. Uh, I'm a researcher. I'm a clinical academic. I'm very keen that we should be absolutely sure of our facts and there's no doubt in my mind that we should be supporting research in this and other countries. We shouldn't be left, be left behind. And in that sense, you, you wouldn't agree with the government position at all? If, that, if the government position is still that we don't need research, no, I think that's outdated. I'm worried that the amount of 
dental uh, of, of mercury coming from dental amalgams that we're putting in the mouths of young children today might be harmful to them as far as affecting their learning abilities, their performance abilities, and I'd hate to think that 20 years from now we will have hurt some of these children when we could have prevented it by proper scientific research, and that is what we must do now.